this part one of uh, Oracle Identity Management, uh, we will learn about some basic concept of OID, which is an LDAP server from Oracle, and OAM, which is a single sign-on solution from Oracle, also called as Oracle Access Manager. So important terms, okay, and the components with respect to your identity management. The first is authentication and authorization. So what is the difference between authentication and authorization is when we access any protected website, we enter our username and password, right? So that is get authenticated from some of the backend LDAP server, okay? Or maybe it, uh, your, if your credentials are stored in a database, then it is get authenticated from the database as well, okay? But it called as an authentication when your username and password is get authenticated, okay? And after that, second term is authorization. So authorization means the resources where you do have the access. Okay, that means you can say about the applications where you have the access. For example, in an organization, you can access your self-service portal, okay, and then there, there are a lot of links are there, and some, some links are applicable for only the employees, and some links are applicable for the manager, senior management, or HR department, right? So you can access the portal, you will, uh, you can able to see all the links there, okay, but it will be protected. So if you will click on the manager link, okay, if, if, as an employee, okay, then it will not get authenticated. That means you will be not redirected there because that is only authorized for the management or, or for your manager, okay? So authentication is when your username and password is get authenticated and authorization is when the application on which you have the authorization is get authenticated. Second is LDAP server. So LDAP server is you can say about is an also called as an Oracle internet directory, uh, which is a LDAP solution from the Oracle, okay? It is basically used for storing your uh, profile, username, your password, and then your profile data. For example, your phone number, and then your address, and some other uh, related information, which is personal to you, okay? But main thing is that it, it is basically, it is used to store the identity, which is your username and password, okay? And there's an alternate uh, software, you can say from the Microsoft, is Microsoft MS AD, Active Directory, okay? So YD is a LDAP directory server from Oracle, and AD is a, a directory server from Microsoft. And second is about your single sign-on. From Oracle, you have Oracle Access Manager, okay? So what is the use of single sign-on is that whenever you enter your username and password, okay? After that, if you are subsequently going to access few more links, okay, within your organization, okay? Then it will not prompt you for the username and password again and again. So whenever, Initially, when you will access some application, okay, then you will get a login screen and when you will enter your username and password, some session will get created, okay? And subsequently after that, whenever you access any of the, your websites, internal websites or links or portals, okay? Then it will not ask you for the username and password again and again. So that is called a single sign-on, okay? So let us see a flow for that one. Suppose a user is trying to access some website, okay? Maybe from the internet or from the internal network, right? It is served by the web server. So in most of the cases, there is a front-end web server, okay, in front of your applications, okay? And then your web server send a request to your application for your business processing, business logic processing, and then your application server contact your database. So that is a very basic flow of your application, right? But to give access to a user to connect with your application server, okay, there is a layer in between that is called an authentication, authorization, and SSO, okay? So as I said, this couple of minutes back, okay? So whenever a user try to access a website which is protected with username and password, then first he will get a login screen, he will enter his username and password. After that, that user has to be authenticated. Then his request, the page he is trying to access is get to be authorized. And after that, if it is authenticated and authorized, there is a single sign on session has to be created so that after that, uh, that user can access all the other links without giving the username and password again and again, right? So for that one, you have a solution from Oracle that is called a OAM, which is a single sign-on solution. And second is your OID, which is a LDAP directory server, okay? So once OAM and OID all together authenticate and authorize your request or a user request, then it will send the request to backend application server. That means when the user is authenticated and authorized, 
okay and the single sign on session is created then request will forward to your application server okay so what are the main components here you have a web server and which is the oracle ohs from the oracle then ldap server which is an oracle oid and then sso which is oracle oem now let us see in bit detail okay a user try to access a website from internal network or from the external network the request will go to your web server and for single sign on okay if you wanted to integrate your application with a single sign on as i said oam oracle access manager is a single sign on solution from the oracle for that you have to install a small software which also called as an agent or web gate to your web server okay so what is the work of web server uh, web gate is to forward your request from web server to oam which is a single sign on solution right so your web server will configure with web gate okay and then once a user request will reach to your web server then web gate will intercept that request and then it will forward to the oam for authentication and authorization okay and then your oam will contact your oid for your username and password right so it will authenticate a user and password from the oid okay and once it is authenticated okay it will create a session and then it will send the request to your backend application server and database right so what is the setup of uh, this kind of a configurations you have a web server right so once your web server is installed you have to install a web gate software there okay so that means your OHS, which is a web server, need to be configured with WebGate so that it can forward the request to your backend OAM, which is a single sign on solution, which will be used for the authentication and authorization. Okay, so in the backend, you have to install and configure and integrate your OAM and OID because WebGate will send the request to OAM, which is a single sign on solution, to create a single sign on session, and your OAM will authenticate the user from the OID because as I said, it is an LDAP server which will store your all the username and password. Okay. So whatever the username and password has been entered by the user in the login page, it will intercept by the web gate, it will forward to OAM, and from OAM, it will get authenticated from the OID. And once it is authenticated and the authorization has been given to the user, then OAM will create a session. Okay, and then the request will go to a backend application server. So you have to install a web server, and on web server, we have to install a web gate then you have to install oam and then you have to install oid and then you have to integrate your oam with oid right so let us now see the basic flow again okay for example some user try to authenticate okay by accessing a website and by entering the username and password the first the request will reach to web server where your web gate is installed okay and then your web gate will send a request to OAM and will check if the resource that your user is trying to access is protected or not, because there could be possibility that the resource is not protected by the username and password or, or, or maybe uh, because sometimes you have a certain informational kind of a website, right? simple websites that need not require to be protected. Okay, So it will request will forward to OAM and then it will check if the resource is protected or not. Your OAM will check all the policies, okay, and then it will return back your log and return the policy decision. So return content if resource not protected, then it will be granted to user. For example, if resource is not protected, then you, the end user will get the web page. And if it is protected, okay, then your request will redirect to the login page, right? Because it is a protected resource, so you have to get a login page. So once login page is there, user will enter the username and password, okay? And again, the request will go to OAM server. OAM will identify or verify the credentials from the backend identity store, which is an OID. Okay, and then it will create a session. Once the user is authenticated, okay, it will create a session and then it will send the result, result back to the end user, whether your username password is correct or not. If it is not correct, then you will again get a login screen with the message that the username or password is wrong. But if your username and password is correct, okay, then you will be redirected again okay it will again the request will again go to the your web gate and it will check for the authorization if the user is authorized or not and then a session will get created and after the validations of the policy and the content will be returned to the user and then user will get the main web page 
Thanks for watching this video.